Hi everyone and welcome to another digital piano review here at Miriam Pianos on YouTube. My name is Stu Harrison and in today's video we're looking at Roland's GP609. This is an instrument that's been with us already for a couple of years but still very much one of the industry favorites and a wonderful instrument to play. We've got a beautiful example in white here with us today and we're going to be running through its features talking about the action and letting you hear it at home. Uh, if this is the first time to the channel, we would really appreciate it if you did subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join our ever-growing community of piano lovers. So without further ado, let's get started with the Roland GP609 right away. has been making really exceptional digital baby grants for several years now so this is not their first kick at the can and the GP609 was released uh, back in 2018 and is still very very much a current model. It's the first chance if I had to really explore the instrument in a, a kind of a concentrated analytical kind of way. I've never done a digital baby grand review on the entire channel before so I thought it was really great and quite appropriate uh, to give Roland the honor of being the first digital baby grand for me to do. I have in the past shied away from the digital baby grands because except for a few instances like I know that uh, uh, Kawhi with their uh, CP1 uh, and if, uh, there's a few others you know the Yamaha Avant Grand like there's been some really great efforts by a few of the big companies to put out good digital baby grand products but for the most part uh, the vast majority of them tend to be very low quality very low cost instruments which really are just stuffing a super basic digital piano inside uh, kind of a grand piano shaped object uh, just at the lowest price point they possibly can and that's the vast majority of them so it's never a category that's really excited me for musical reasons but the latest volley from Roland, and I mean, it's not just uh, this, you know, latest release from 2018. It really goes back all the way to when they came out with the V Grand. Uh, this has been a major push by the company for a while to make great musical instruments that happen to be shaped like a grand piano. And so the GP609 uh, is the, the best that you can get from the Roland line right now. And we have a, quite a lovely example in white uh, in front of us for us to take a look at. Uh, digital baby grand pianos are uh, more or less what they sound like and so there are no strings inside this instrument there are no hammers inside this instrument uh, strictly speaking from a musical standpoint there's no specific reason what to have it shaped like a grand piano in an acoustic grand piano there are actually a lot of engineering and technical reasons to have the instrument shaped the way it is um, so I mean at its core the reason to do this uh, is purely aesthetic uh, but one of the things that it does allow for is a fairly large cabinet area where you can create some nice resonance some nice tonal resonance so you've got like a big box resonator basically um, where you can place a number of different uh, speakers a number of different transducers uh, to get some of that big woofy tone that you expect out of a larger grand piano and that's exactly what Roland has done here uh, we've got uh, you know mid-range and, and high-end tweeters that are at the back of the soundboard. Uh, there, are inst there are speakers underneath, so you really have uh, sound emanating all over the place. Uh, something that Roland has focused on always. This, I mean, and, and this is 40, 50 years uh, old. I mean, this tradition is focusing on great quality cabinets. So their grand piano cabinet is done in uh, genuine polyester. This is the same grade, same quality uh, polyester that you are going to find on an acoustic grand piano. That in itself makes it somewhat unusual and something you, where you can tell that the intent is that this instrument is supposed to be in your home for quite a few years. This is not a disposable instrument or something that you're going to have to take back to Costco after three or four years because of you know, cabinet uh, issues and cracked polyester and all that type of thing. The GP609 uses uh, many of the same elements that you'll find throughout the Roland line. So there isn't really any technology that is totally unique to the GP609 when you are looking at it in the context of the rest of the Roland line, except for maybe some of the 
amplifier configurations uh, that are on here because the crossovers uh, and the various speaker setups uh, do give this, acoustically speaking, quite a unique playing experience. And for that reason, uh, we are actually not taking a direct line out of this instrument for this review. We normally do, so that you can get all the detail uh, and we blend it with uh, some live mics. But because there's such a focus on the speaker system for this instrument, we've actually decided to mic it. This was similar to what we did, uh, say, with the Kawai uh, Novus series. Uh, we actually used microphones as well. So. So let's start with the action. Uh, the action in this piano is the PHA-50. That is exactly the same action as you are going to get in their very top stage piano, the RD-2000. It's also the action you get in the DP-603, as well as many of their HP series uh, uh, uprights. So there is really not a lot of, of uh, uh, ground being broken here with the action. That said, the PHA-50 is a great uh, action. It's a it's kind of a hybrid action. It's a combination of both wood parts as well as plastic parts. It is a fairly long key stick compared to what you do get in other digital uh, products generally. Uh, and so it does get pretty close to simulating I think the uh, the resistance and you know the the overall sensation of playing a small grand. Oddly enough, even though this is their top grand, this isn't the top action they make. There is an action that they put in their LX, their top uh, LX product, uh, which kind of goes one step further. It's even a longer extended key. And so I imagine at some point, Roland is going to be releasing a grand piano with that even larger uh, grand inside it. Um, so this is an action with escapement or let off. That means that about two thirds of the way down the key, you're gonna feel it just slip off, or at least that's what it's simulating, uh, on a real acoustic piano where it sort of slips off, the jack slips off the knuckle, and that leaves the hammer completely free uh, to swing, strike the string, and reset. Um, and on digital pianos, they've been simulating this for a while, uh, I guess as a way to increase the authenticity. It was never really supposed to be there in the first place with acoustic pianos. It was kind of an almost an imperfection in the design of the action, or maybe an unavoidable consequence of the design of the action. Uh, but several years ago, digital piano companies started simulating this, and here we go. Now everything that is considered high-end digital all has this escapement simulation. Go figure. Uh, the black keys have a uh, great subtle texture on it. Uh, it's a nice uh, sort of a, a balance between stickiness as well as slipperiness. I, I, that is a big deal for piano keys actually. Uh, if you just put a straight shiny plastic key in the black and the white key, it makes it actually quite sticky and quite difficult uh, to play instruments or, or play advanced um, repertoire on those instruments. And so on the PHA-50 and on the GP-609, you've got a nice ivory simulated texture on the uh, white key, and you've got uh, sort of an ebony simulated texture on the black key. The uh, action uh, for some people uh, feels a little bit slow. especially when you compare it to previous roll and actions. However, when I play this compared to say the Kawai RH3 action, which is 
really you know, highly regarded. Uh, Nord uses it on their uh, grand model as well. This reminds me a heck of a lot of the PHA3 uh, action. So for those who are familiar with that, I don't think you're going to find a dissimilar uh, sort of experience here. Uh, so it's a slightly softer bottom uh, to the uh, the key dip or the you know the, the key travel, uh, and the repetition speed is surprisingly fast even though the key itself doesn't feel super springy. So uh, you know you, it's action is very personal, but I happen to be used to this action. It's it's what I play on the RD2000, uh, and it, like I said, I find it quite similar to the uh, to the RHA or, or the uh, PHA3. No. RH3. Let's get into sound. So the GP609 utilizes Roland's Supernatural piano engine. This is uh, something they've been, a technology they've been working on for quite a while. It's their main uh, sound uh, tone engine. And this has a special edition of the Supernatural uh, engine. It is a modeling edition. So uh, there's a few models within the Roland lineup that use this. The GP609 is one of them. And uh, you know, to cut a long story short, Modeling basically means that it is generating the tone in real time. It's not accessing a sample. It's not creating it with sort of PCM technology. This is actually um, a computer model which is generating the tone algorithmically uh, in real time. This was not something that really was even a possibility 10 years ago or, or further back because you just didn't have fast, cheap microprocessors to do that in real time. And in fact, it's not technically real time, but the delay is so small that your ear can no longer detect it uh, as anything except absolute real time. So I mean, I, I think the, the delay is something like four or five uh, milliseconds, and that's more than quick. For most people, that is perceived as absolute real time. So uh, the other thing that gives you is complete unlimited polyphony. So for people who are buying this for a nice accent uh, to the room, they're not gonna be caring too, too much about polyphony, but for people who are buying it both as a great instrument as well as a piece of furniture, here's the deal on polyphony. We've done a separate video on this, so you may wanna check it out. But that's the number of notes that you can simultaneously play before the processor just runs out of oomph and starts chopping stuff off. Uh, when you're outside of piano mode on this piano, the polyphony is 384, which is like plenty already. Uh, but when you are in piano mode, when you're playing one of the main acoustic patches, it's unlimited. Uh, you're not likely to ever even run out of 384, but for whatever it's worth, the unlimited is kind of this hypothetical spec, which is kind of cool. Uh, the piano tone has a number of aspects to it which you can manipulate, uh, and you can do it on the screen, but one of the much more fun ways to do it, um, and I'm going to record my screen, so you can actually see what is going on. So there's a number of presets that let you load up uh, all kinds of parameters at once in a combination that they think Roland thinks that you're going to enjoy. I've done the GP609 440 American tuning, uh, but there's kind of a factory default. There's one called 442 European tuning that raises the tuning up to 442 hertz from 440. Uh, yeah, there's just a number of ways that you can do this. And of course, the ones that are GP609 are settings which uh, presumably are better tailored to the combination of speakers and amplifiers and things like that. So I really enjoy that 609 American tuning preset. But you can get under the hood and just go absolutely bonkers with how specific you are uh, with this. So for the lid, I know we have our lid like that, but you can actually simulate what it's like to have the lid closed versus all the way open. And I find that one or two seems to deliver a really nice tonal effect.
cabinet resonance is there to edit as well. Soundboard type, hammer noise, hammer response, string resonance, duplex scale, damper resonance, all sorts of things. So not only does this provide you a list of all of the different aspects of the tone which is being processed, but like I said, it gives you the ability uh, to edit that, which is a lot of fun. It more or less means that you get to create your own personal piano uh, and because the combinations are almost limitless, it's a virtual guarantee that no matter what space you have, you're going to be able to make this piano sound brilliant in it. If you don't want to get that specific with the uh, manipulation of the tone, they have a few very easy to understand manipulations on the uh, piano's main control surface itself. So you can control ambience, which is really just Roland's word for reverb, uh, brilliance, which is sort of a, an EQ function, uh, key touch, and then transpose, which is pretty obvious as well. So key touch lets you adjust how sensitive the key is to what you're doing. Um, brilliance is a, a very uh, kind of a blunt instrument for modifying the tone, but in a pinch, it does what you need it to do. So brilliance, that's very bright, all the way down to very mellow. And it really is more or less an EQ setting. And then you've got ambience, which is, uh, we've got it completely dry because we're in a pretty live room right now, but you can jack that up. So you've got the ambience. So you don't have to get that specific if you don't want to, to still make some modifications and get this to a point where you're having a lot of fun. So like we said, we've got this uh, algorithmically driven piano engine, which is pretty cool. We've got ways to control it, both a, in a basic way over on the uh, panel, but also we can use a mobile device such as an iPhone or a tablet or something like that uh, to do it uh, through here. It will work uh, through Bluetooth. So this cable that you see is actually just for power because my phone was a little bit low on battery when we did this. Uh, otherwise, I would not need that cable. It's important uh, to note that. Moving outside of the piano sound, this instrument has well over 300 other additional tones to it. Uh, so if we get back into our piano uh, category here, we've got concert piano, ballad, mellow. Bright. Which it is. And this is also where another app Roland offers comes in very handy because for 300 sounds, they only give you five buttons to help access that. Uh, the control interface on this is so much easier to use when you are in the Piano Partner app. So we're gonna get into the Piano Partner 2 app which gives us far easier access to those hundreds of sounds rather than trying to access them uh, just through these few buttons on the interface itself. It's doable, it's not that bad, but if you do have a mobile device, it makes it so much easier and more fun, honestly. Uh, so we're going to hit remote control here, and now we have the ability uh, to switch the sounds right from the phone. So if we get into e-piano, Vintage EP, oops. Oops. 
FM piano. EP. Woo. Kind of like the Disney Whitney Houston piano. And so on and so forth. They've got some great organs on here. Woo, that is bright. Uh, lots of other strings, other classical pianos, drums, and then the entire general MIDI 2 bank, which is where most of those numbers come from. From a feature standpoint, this instrument has all of the stuff you'd expect it to have. It has a split mode, which allows you to play two different sounds on the top and the bottom, uh, layer mode, which lets you play two sounds simultaneously across the entire range. It also has twin piano, uh, which essentially splits it up into two separate ranges of piano uh, that are transposed so that you have like two middle C's, for example. That might be middle C and then this might be middle C. Essentially great for duet playing. Uh, it's got a built-in metronome, which is very easy to use. But then you get into another range of features that the GP609 does really, really well. And you see this on a few of the other uh, Roland products. And this is all of the built-in songs and your ability to play along with those songs, uh, as well as have scores right on a mobile device for those songs. Uh, and so we're going to just uh, load that up. Uh, so let's say that we're going to do the wal Nutcracker Waltz of the Flowers. So you can actually turn off both what the left hand is doing, what the right hand is doing, and as you just heard, there's also usually an accompaniment track as well. And you can control the parts right here on the right side, so it's a ton of fun. Anyway, uh, Marriage of Figaro, there's, uh, oh my goodness, there's so much in here. Uh, classical masterpieces, easy piano scales, so, and there's over 300 of these songs that are preloaded in here. So these classics with the orchestral or band accompaniment that you can play along with, this is a lot more fun than you would think it is. Like, hours of your life you'll just love uh, diving in and using this specific feature. Because you can, you can turn the left hand and the right hand off and so you can, it really just feels like you're participating in a much uh, higher way or a much uh, more meaningful way than just simply throwing a recording on the stereo and playing along with it. As I said, most of those pieces you can also get um, the uh, sheet music right on your device, which also, uh, again, it just makes this uh, so much more engaging to be able to do. So you can read along with it. Uh, there we are back to the beginning. <laughs> Uh, and that was the waltz of the uh, sugar plum fairy, again, uh, going back into there. So we've talked about the action, we've talked about the sound, we've discussed some of the features. Um, you've seen this Bluetooth connection happening, uh, and of course you can also use this as a Bluetooth speaker. So you can take advantage of all of those uh, you know, wonderful amps uh, and speakers that are there and actually play off of a wireless device such as a phone uh, and you can uh, register this pair it as a Bluetooth speaker uh, and you're off to the races. This also has a recorder and you can record both internally as well as to a USB key. So there you have it. I mean for a, a customer who is looking for a convenient easy to own 
a musical instrument and they love the look of a grand piano and for about the cost of like the absolute cheapest acoustic grand piano that you could possibly find in the market but you're getting something that's so easy to own doesn't need to be tuned doesn't need to be uh, you know you don't have to worry about climate control uh, the sound is great you can use your headphones you can you know pair it to a device lots and lots of things to like and enjoy about a baby grand piano for people who are uh, not as much uh, concerned about getting those highly specific things uh, that you would get in an acoustic piano. So thank you so much for watching the review. Hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about Roland's GP609 Digital Baby Grand Piano. Leave us a comment, let us know what you thought, and if you haven't done so yet, we would really appreciate it if you did subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know every single time we come out with a new video. We would love to see you back participating in our community of piano lovers uh, and certainly viewing future videos. Once again, my name is Stu Harris and this has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube and we will see you again soon.